we have to take her to New York. New York? The city is horrible in August. Very, very hot. Well, we have to go, Grace said. Gloria will see new things there. She'll meet new friends, and she'll forget that machine. Okay, please remember that Grace is a little girl. Uh, I'm sorry. Please remember that Grace is the mother, and Gloria is the little girl. Gloria's parents told her about the trip to New York, and she was very pleased. On the, when the day of the trip arrived, the little girl was smiling happily. As they were traveling to the airport in a taxi gyro, a flying taxi, she suddenly turned towards her mother. I know why we're going to the city, Mama, she said. We're going to find Robbie, aren't we? When her mother did not answer, Gloria, Gloria repeated her question. Maybe, Mrs. Weston replied angrily. It was the year 1998 A.D., and there were, there were many things for visitors to do and see in New York City. The Westons, Gloria's family, went to the top of the tall Roosevelt Building and looked down at the city. They visited museums and zoos. They went along the Hudson River in an old boat. Gloria and her parents traveled up into the stratosphere in a spaceship. A stratosphere is the area of the sky just before space. They went down into the sea in a submarine, and the family went shopping. But Gloria was only interested in robots. Mrs. Weston did not want to see any robots, but Gloria wanted to see them all. One day at the Museum of Science and Industry, Gloria disappeared. Her parents searched for many minutes. At last, they found her in a room with the speaking robot. Gloria, why did you run away? Her mother asked angrily. I came to see the speaking robot, Mama, Gloria replied. I thought that he might know where, where Robbie was. The little girl started crying. I've got to find Robbie, Mama. Mrs. Weston did not know what to do. That evening, George Weston, the father, went out alone. When he returned, he looked happy. I've had an idea, he said to his wife the next morning. We're not going to buy back Robbie from U.S. robots, Grace said. No, George replied. But Gloria thought that Robbie was a person. He was her friend. So, of course, she can't forget him. We need to show her that Robbie wasn't human. She needs to understand that he was just some pieces of metal with electricity. Then she'll forget him. How can we do this? I've spoken to the general manager of U.S. Robots, George said. He will show us the factory where the robots are built. Then Gloria will understand that a robot is not alive. 
George, what a good idea, Mrs. Weston said happily. Mr. Weston smiled. Mr. Struthers, the general manager of U.S. Robots, liked talking. He was taking the Westons on a tour of the factory. Mrs. Mrs. Weston was not interested in robots, but she asked Mr. Struthers to explain several things. She wanted her daughter to understand everything about robots. However, George Weston was becoming was becoming impatient. Can we see the area where only robots work? he asked. Oh, yes, yes, said Mr. Struthers, smiling. Robots making robots. Yes, of course. Follow me. Struthers, Mr. Struthers, took the Westons to a large room where a lot of robots were working together. There, Struthers said proudly, robots working alone and safely. There have been no accidents here with the robots. Gloria was not listening. Remember, Gloria is the little girl. In this room, there were no people at all. But there were six or seven robots that were looking, that were working at a table in the middle of the room. Then Gloria looked more carefully. She was not sure, but one of the robots looked like it was Robbie. Gloria shouted excitedly. She ran across. She ran across the room towards toward Robbie. She did not see the huge tractor that was coming towards her. A tractor is uh, farm equipment. Well, it's very large, like a car. The three adults watched horrified. They could not move. George started to run after his daughter, but he was too slow. The tractor was going to hit Gloria. But Robbie moved immediately and very fast. In a second, his long legs had taken him to the little girl. He caught one of her arms and pulled her from the path of the tractor. Half a second later, the tractor drove over the exact place where Gloria had stood. Gloria's parents ran to their daughter and held her tightly. Gloria laughed. She did not realize that she had been in danger. She had found her friend, Robbie. Mrs. Weston put down her daughter, and turned to her husband. You planned this, didn't you? This was your plan, right? She said angrily. You knew that Gloria would find him. Robbie wasn't designed to work here. Yes, Grace, I knew that Robbie would be here, said George but I didn't know that this would happen. And Robbie saved Gloria's life. You can't send him away again. Grace Weston, the mother, turned and looked at Gloria and Robbie. Robbie was holding the little girl in his strong metal arms. His red eyes shone brightly. Okay, George, 
said Mrs. Weston finally. She sighed. He, he can stay with us. Gloria found Robbie in 1998, Susan Calvin said. By 2002, U.S. robots had invented speaking robots, but then many people protested about them. They were frightened. Robots now looked and behaved like humans, and people didn't like this. Between 2003 and 2007, most governments on Earth banned robots. If you ban something, it is not allowed in your country. Did Gloria have to give Robbie back to the factory? I asked. Yes, said Dr. Calvin. When I joined U.S. Robots in 2007, the company had money problems. This was because they couldn't sell robots on Earth. But then we developed new types of robots. These models, these new robots, could work on other planets, other worlds in the solar system. And that was very successful, I said. Well, said Calvin, we had some problems. First, we tried to change the models that we had invented. But this was not good enough. It was not satisfactory. But if you want to know more about that, young man, you must talk to Gregory Powell or Michael Donovan. She went on. Powell and Donovan were robotics engineers. They were sent to work where there were problems with the company's robots. I don't know where Donovan is now, but Powell lives here in New York. Could you tell me a little about the problems, I asked? Mr. Powell can give me more details, more information later. Susan Calvin put her thin hands onto the desk. There are two or three cases that I know a little about, she said. I'll tell you those stories. Chapter 3. Reason. The robot engineers Gregory Powell and Michael Donovan had been sent to the space station, Solar Station 5. The engineers had to check the work done by the experimental robots. Powell and Donovan were on the space station for less than two weeks when they discovered there was a problem. The two men were sitting in the officer's room. Greg Powell looked across the table. Donovan and I built you one week ago, he said slowly. No one replied. The only sound came from the beam director that was in a room far below the officer's room. Robot QT1 did not move. His red eyes stared at the man on the other side of the table. So in this situation, two men are talking with a robot. 
The men are Powell and Donovan, and the robot is QT1. Robot QT1 did not move. His red eyes stared at the man on the other side of the table. Powell suddenly felt nervous. The QT robots were very intelligent, but no one knew what they thought. Of course, every robot was impressioned or taught the laws of robotics when it was built. So this robot, which the men had named QT, was safe. But the QT model had only recently been invented, and this machine was the first of the QT models. Something made you QT, explained Powell. You You told us that your memory started a week ago. That's because Donovan and I made you. We built you from parts that were sent from Earth. There must be a better explana explanation than that, Powell, said the robot. Why should you make me? This is illogical. It doesn't make sense. So now the robot is talking. There must be a better explanation than that, Powell, said the robot. Why should you make me? That is illogical. Why? said Powell, and he laughed. I'm not sure yet, said Cutie, but I will use logic and discover the truth. Powell stood up and put his hand on the robot's cold metal shoulder. Cutie, he said, I'm going to explain something to you. You're the first robot that has asked about his own existence. You're intelligent. You're able to understand what happens outside this place. Come with me. The robot followed the engineer out of the room. Powell touched a button and a section of the wall opened. Behind the wall there was a window of thick glass. Through the glass they saw black space and millions of bright stars. Look, he said. Cutie looked through the window. I have seen things like this before in the engine room, Cutie said. Powell pointed toward the dark sky. What do you think that is? he asked. A black material with little shining dots, QT replied. I know that, that the director sends out beams to some of these dots. The beams always go to the same dots. And I know that these dots move and that our beams move with them. So let me explain. A pal has asked Cutie to look at space. And what is, what is space? And Cutie says, it's something black with little shining dots. Of course, Space is full of stars, but Cutie does not know about stars now. And beams are uh, beams of energy for communication. 
Good, said Powell. Now listen carefully. The black material is space. Space has no beginning and no end. It can't be measured. The little dots are worlds. Some are planets and some are stars, and they move through space. Some worlds are small. Others are very large, millions of miles across. For comparison, space stations like this one are very small. Solar Station 5 is only one mile across, or it's about two and a half kilometers across. It was built by humans. Humans like Donovan and me live on some of some of the worlds, Powell went on. But some of the worlds are cold and empty. They need energy so that life can exist there. The biggest star is the sun. It is a huge ball of burning energy. So we take energy from the sun and direct the energy to cold and empty worlds. We use the beam director on this station to send beams of energy to colder worlds. So on this space station is a special machine that catches the energy of the sun and then sends it to other places that don't have a sun. Which dot do you come from? QT asked. Powell looked through the window. He pointed to a small blue dot. There it is, QT. That's our world. We call it Earth. There are three billion human beings on Earth. And in about three weeks, I'll be back there. But what about me, Powell, said the robot. You have not explained my existence. When space stations were first built, humans ran them. Humans worked on them and operated them, said Powell. They made sure the energy beam was sent correctly. However, the heat and radiation from a beam are dangerous, and there are often electron storms in space. Because these things can harm humans, robots were developed to do the work. And now only two humans are needed in each space station. You're the most advanced type of robot that has been developed. If you can run this station alone, humans won't have to work here again. They'll only visit to bring parts for repairs. The robot's eyes shone red. Planets that are millions of miles across? He said, Worlds with billions of humans? I am sorry, Powell, but I do not believe you. I will find out the truth myself. As the robot left the room, he passed Donovan, who was coming in. What's happened? Donovan asked. I told Cutie that we made him. Powell replied. I explained about Earth, space, the stars, and planets, but he doesn't believe me. He wants to discover the truth for himself. 
Donovan pushed his fingers through his red hair. That robot makes me nervous, he said angrily. A few days later, Cutie knocked on the door of the officer's room and entered. Powell and Donovan were eating their lunch. Donovan put down the sandwich that he was holding. Donovan, Powell, I have come to talk with you, said the robot quietly. Do we have to sit here and listen to this crazy robot? Donovan asked Powell. Be quiet, Mike, Powell said. Go on, cutie, we're listening. I have thought for two days. I have been thinking for two days, said Cutie. This was very interesting. My first question was, why do I exist? Why am I alive? Powell frowned. I've already told you, he said. You exist because we Donovan and me made you. And if you don't believe us, said Donovan, we can take you apart. The robot stared at them. You made me? Why do you think this? It is illogical. Why do you say that? Pal asked. Cutie made a strange noise. It was almost like the sound of a laugh. You are simple beings. You are simple animals. You are made of soft material, he said. You are weak. You are not well designed. He pointed at Donovan's sandwich. You have to get energy from this food that you put in your mouth and you need to sleep. You are harmed by small changes in temperature. Radiation harms you. But I am well designed. I can absorb energy easily, and I can use it immediately and efficiently. My body, my metal body, is strong, and I do not have to sleep. Radiation and changes in temperature do not harm me. A simple being, a simple animal cannot create another more superior being. If we didn't make you, said Donovan angrily, who did? QT nodded slowly. Good job, Donovan. That was the next question, said the robot. The being that made me must be more powerful than me. So there is only one logical answer. The men were silent. The being controls everything in the station. QT went on. We all serve the being. Donovan looked at Powell. Greg, he said, he's talking about the converter, isn't he? I am talking about the master, QT said coldly. The master is the being that we all serve. Donovan laughed, and Powell shook his head. The master made humans first, said the robot. Humans are the lowest type of being. They are simple. Next, the master made more intelligent beings, robots. 
Finally, the Master made me. I am here today to replace the last humans. From today, I serve the Master. No, said Powell angrily. You'll obey us. You'll be silent until we know that you can use the converter correctly. You're here to work with the converter. That's why you were built. Do you understand? Now go. QT said nothing as he left the room. Donovan pushed his fingers through his hair. There's going to be trouble with that robot, he said. He's crazy. <laughs>